Hey guys, Miracle Max back again. Recently I was traveling with a work colleague and he asked me to have a look at his uh, external hard drive. He's got a lot of photos etc on there but unfortunately he can't access the data. So today we're looking at a bit of data retrieval. Let's see if we can fix it. with my motto making the complex simple it's really really important to have a very good visual before you make a start with anything and as soon as this guy handed me this drive I realized hey the um, the data jack has actually come off the circuit board it may be something as simple as this but we need to pull it apart and uh, perhaps resolder those pads back on and see if we can access his data once again. He's got a lot of family photos on there and he doesn't want to lose them. Just by running my fingernail around here together with um, a blade, a knife, I was able to separate the top plastic section from the metal body. Um, that gives us access inside. I now need to pull the drive itself out and have a look at how this jack is actually attached to the circuit board. Just by using my metal spudger I was able to gently lever the drive out. It's held in place um, with four little rubber bungs on the side to locate it and keep it safe. It's also covered with all this aluminium foil which will not only protect it but it will stop any um, electrical interference from affecting the drive itself. So it's just a matter of carefully removing that foil to access the circuitry that I need to hopefully solder that um, connector back into place. Okay, I might pull that completely out the road simply because it's going to be easier to work on with it not attached. There's our jack, our data connector, and we need to connect it right back onto there, which is going to be lots and lots of fun, I'm sure. It will have to be done under the microscope, so I doubt I can film at the same time, but I'll show you if I'm successful or not. The hard drive that we're working on is a Seagate one terabyte. Uh, the part number is 1RK172-568 I believe. And it's a May 2016 model so it's a little over a year old. Um, but as I said uh, the customer has a lot of his family photos on it so he wants data retrieval off of it if possible. So of course to do that we need to hook up the data jack. I'm under my digital microscope at the moment and as you can see there are three main pads that that uh, data jack needs to be connected to or the data port. You can see the pad on the left there, that big square one, and then up the top there we have what's that one, two, three, four, five uh, traces that I need to go onto that side, and then one, two, three, four, five traces on that side. I've had a close look at it, um, I think it's doable, providing that the data is all okay, I can't see that uh, you know providing it's just a mechanical fault as you can see here it's literally just torn away hopefully all those uh, traces are in good nick um, I can't see that there's any tear marks it looks like it's just been um, you know wobbled away by the uh, cable being put in and out and not carefully removed but perhaps it was a manufacturing fault either way um, hopefully I should be able to fix it when you're doing a repair like this it's important that you don't touch any of the components. The static in your body may be enough to short some of those out. So I've been careful not to touch any of those um, ICs or anything like that. Um, also what I'm going to do is put plenty of flux on those affected areas, heat them up um, and tin both these or all three of those pads um, together with those traces uh, on both the hard drive as well as the uh, the input jack um, just to make sure that we have a good um, solder continuity uh, make sure that it solders correctly you probably notice that I've got it in a bench vise and before you have a heart attack and write all sorts of things in the comments I'll just pull the uh, camera down and notice we've got uh, rubber jaws here 
This was from Audi, believe it or not. I think it was about 15 bucks. It's really, really good because of those rubber jaws. It doesn't put any pressure on the component that I'm holding and I feel quite safe um, to work on the electronics up here and it'll be held securely while I do my soldering. Now I must apologize for not being able to get you in any closer. It won't focus any closer and I really need to focus on my work rather than the filming at this particular point. So as I said before, uh, first things first, we need to make sure that our, um, we have all the, the areas that we're going to work on correctly fluxed and um, make sure that they will give uh, good contact when we do our soldering. So make sure all those points are correctly fluxed. We'll cover them with flux. I'm using a flux pen. Oops, probably too far back for you guys. Just a normal flux pen. They're quite good, easy to use. And of course, I'll do the same with the input jack. I'll make sure that I cover those areas with flux in preparation for the soldering. So I'm just tinning those areas now, making sure that I don't touch any other areas. Oh, I see what's happened. I'll have to replace the jack itself because those pins have actually broken off. They've literally broken off. So I won't be able to fix that until I get... There we go, there's an example. Not sure if you can focus on that. But there's a little uh, little trace right on the end of it. So the end of this uh, port that's actually broken off. The little traces should hang up and they're broken off. Okay. So I'll have to do some pricing and have a chat with the customer before I go any further. So I didn't really notice the other night until I was trying to solder this uh, input jack into place. But now that I have the new one, it's quite obvious what's wrong with it. You can see the old one has the traces missing off of it. And the new one here, you can clearly see the 10 traces all told. So it's the new fellow that's going on. So I've tinned the little import jack, as you can see. Um, you're going to have to forgive me if I get in the road of the camera. I just need to focus on getting it in position correctly first and I'll let you have a look in a while. So obviously the important thing is to make sure that there are no bridges for starters um, to line up our port correctly and there's a little locating um, hole right at the back so we need to make sure that we get that one and then just carefully locate it. Fingers crossed. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. I'll just check that before I do anything else, just to make sure that it's correctly positioned. It needs to come to the left just a fraction, I'm thinking. That's looking better there. And it looks pretty good over the other side. Just need to make sure that that hole at the back is correct as well. Our pins seem to be lined up, which is a good sign. Once we get some tension on there, then we'll be able to uh, get all those pins in place. Okay, there we go. That looks good that side. Just have to make sure it's nice and vertical. Just got to do that back leg now, get that, that in place. So before I go any further, what I might do is actually put it in the case and make sure that that jack is in the correct position. Then I can put down all the pins, solder them in place. So you can see that I've just chucked it in the housing itself. And that's located nicely, so I can now do all my pins, feel confident that it should be okay. Bit of a daub on that back pin now. Have a wipe down there with some flux. Make sure that we get rid of any impurities. And then, in theory, just a matter of soldering them up. We'll start with the far lot first. See how we go with those. just pulling them away so that hopefully we won't get any uh, 
continuity between the housing or anywhere else or bridges in between. I'll check that now, I'll see what it's like. I've pretty much got it focused as best as I can. Um, if you have a look, it looks like, even though it's not overly attractive, particularly over this side, it looks like I've hit some of the plastic that might have been where I had trouble with bridging, but it looks like they're soldered correctly. Um, I'm not sure that I want to fiddle with it anymore. I'll just check and make sure that there's no little tiny bridges. They appear to be okay. But um, as for continuity, there seems to be no issue there. I can't see any legs sticking up or anything like that. I'm just about to plug it in for the first time. So let's see if we've been successful with our repair. Okay, well that's a good sign, isn't it? Light comes on. Anything on the screen? Just wait for a sec. Okay, we've got data flashing there and yes, We've got something on the screen. Let's have a look. So the light's on now. Okay, the light's flashing. Data's now come up, which is excellent. Obviously, this is somebody's data. I won't be going through it, but at least we have access to that data and they can now back it up just in case this ever fails in the future. So I'd say that's a successful repair, guys. So guys, that repair worked out quite well, didn't it? It was actually a physical repair, a broken input jack. I'm going to encourage the customer to take more care when removing the charging cable or the data cable and carefully removing it rather than yanking it out. It may have actually been a fault with it originally, I don't know. This had a lot of his work gear on it as well, so I'm sure he'll be happy to get it back in one piece. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've learned something myself this time as usual. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and always feel free to comment down below. I'm interested in what you have to say. So until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. Catch you later.